Hello, this is Malorian with the Orc Tactical Team, and what we're going to be talking about today is characters in 8th. Now, this is going to be a huge change from 7th to 8th. Uh, back in 7th, if you're playing, say, a, a 2250 point game, you could have up to one Lord and then up to five, uh, four characters, so you could have three heroes as well. You know, Bretonians could have one more, but in general, that's what you had. Uh, because of this, you usually had some pretty set uh, builds that you were taking. For example, for orcs, you know, you'd always need to take that one orc general to have the good leadership. You needed that BSB, and then you needed magic defense, so you'd have a shaman as one of your uh, your third choice, and then your fourth one. You know, you had a little bit of playing, but usually that was uh, another shaman, just so you could have either uh, two scroll caddies or one caddy, one with the staff of sneaky stealing. When we move on to 8th though, everything changes because it's going to percent, uh, percentile. Uh, for our lords, you can have up to 25%, and then for your heroes, you can have up to 25%, which can mean you can take a lot of heroes. You have a, a lot of options now. Uh, it can mean that some things are you can't take. You know, if you were someone who did before, they would take a big expensive special character or person on a star dragon uh, it could mean that depending on the point size that you can't fit those uh, lords in there however now even in small point games like 500 point games you can put lords in there if you can fit it in if it's a, a cheap enough lord but let's really look at what you're going to be needing in your eighth games uh, of course first thing you're going to need is a general you sh nothing's changed there you still have to take at least one model to be your general and because of the new steadfast rule you're going to want to make sure, obviously, that this general has a very high leadership. Actually, you're going to want that high leadership for everything, but uh, because of the new way we're going with hordes, steadfast is so critical, you're going to make you these big, cheap units uh, stubborn, so you're going to have to need uh, some character there to make the leadership high enough to make that actually work. So that's the first thing you're going to need, is looking through your book, find out who has a high leadership, and uh, go for that. Uh, Next thing is going to be the BSB. Before BSBs, depending on the army, were fairly critical. Now again, they're they're just as critical, even more so. And the reason for that is, even though you can re-roll your break tests, now it has the added advantage where you can re-roll the psychology tests within a uh, foot as well. So if you have something with stupidity, something like that, all of a sudden this can help out with those problems as well. So this BSB is going to be critical. Uh, as well as with the hordes, once again with the steadfast, if you have a re-rollable leadership 9 or 10, that big unit of skink slaves or whatever are going to be there for a very long time. Um, now, now that we know that those are going to be so critical, one of the next things that you did not see so much in 7th that you're going to start seeing in 8th is assassins. Because when people want to try and break these hordes, Either you could go and try and do it just through huge amounts of kills or you know some crazy unit, or if you can hunt down that general or that BSB, general obviously first, and kill them, well all of a sudden you have this huge advantage. Now that was the case in 7th as well, but now it just becomes so much more critical with these hordes that I think every army is going to need to start figuring in these assassin type characters. and because. You know, sometimes you can have lords and stuff like that is your general that are also killy. Uh, because a lot of these times are probably going to be suicide attacks, this is going to have to be a separate character. Just something that, you know, either has a lot of attacks, something that you can throw on that does some sort of killing blow, uh, something that does multiple wounds, you know, the Sword of Fate, the Piranha Blade, stuff like that. That, you know, as long as you hit this thing, this BSB once, he's dead or as long as you get this one killing blow, uh, then they're dead. Uh, so that's going to be your, your third character. And now if we, now that we know that, and know that people are going to be trying to assassinate your general and BSB, now we can step back and look at that general and BSB again and know that you're going to have to make them fairly defensive. With these assassins coming at you, trying to kill you, with the fact that with stepping up and more ranks attacking, you're going to be having more attacks on these guys, you're going to have to make sure that these lords and... Uh, the general and the BSB are fairly solid. In fact, it might even be the case that you don't put anything into them at all. And what I'm saying there is that, you know, with vampire counts, where usually there's a bunker in the back to hide, everybody might want to start doing that. You know, just find your cheapest uh, character with the highest leadership. Don't give them anything except for some sort of utility items. Put them in the back. Same thing with a BSB. For orcs, 
you might just want to take a Night Goblin BSB, keep them as cheap as possible, throw them back in the bunker, and then the nice thing is that with these percentiles, you don't have to have just one lord, you can have several. So you can have that one lord that's your general that you keep cheap, you know, for orcs that would just be a plain old orc, war boss, throw them in the back, done. Uh, then you can have another war boss set up to be your killy one that goes up in the front to start doing that. Um, the same thing with the BSB, you know, you, because he's going to be in the back and in this bunker, a lot of his magic banners won't matter, so you can give him some of the more fun utility items. Uh, for example, for orcs, you might want to give him the, the, the item so that you can re-roll how many hits your fanatics do. So say if your bunker was night goblins, you could be holding back with three and sending them up through the front units. Um, now, when you get past these things, the next thing you're going to need is some magic defense and magic as well. So, uh, with all the magic going on, I'd say every single army is going to need a level 4. Uh, that's going to probably be able to use up all your 2d6 uh, power dice you're going to have. Uh, you could also throw in a level 2 if you want. But at this point, you're going to look to try and synergize. And it could be that because, you know, usually you have that magic person staying farther back, that you're going to be making this magic person your general if he also has the highest leadership so you can keep him back so you don't need to have a separate level four as well as the general as well as maybe a Achille one as well. Uh, for defense wise hopefully that level four is enough you know if you can give him uh, whatever magical items you want to use to try and go for defense but you might even have to take a second hero to try and throw in those extra uh, scrolls and things because even whereas before you could take your scroll caddies that have two scrolls that doesn't exist anymore so you might need to have that second one first of all to back up your your magic offense and then defensively to also hold these extra items so you can see that already you know we're looking at a general we're looking at a bsb we're looking at an assassin we're looking at a caster we're looking at a, a secondary caster and we're already past the point where you know, in, back in 7th, you'd only have four characters. And we're not even done yet, because with this 25%, it's likely you still have room. And I should say right now that just because you can take 50% 50 of your total allowance in characters in general, doesn't mean you have to fill it all. But there's a lot of times where you might as well squeak some things in. Uh, for example, for orcs, you can have a lot of utility characters, such as such as a goblin on a wolf, right? You can just have them hiding in a unit, zip up to try and destroy war machines, and opposed to something like uh, fast cab that you have to, you know, it's a little bit bigger, harder to move in, uh, it can be shut up. This unit, some of these guys can be held back in big blocks and shoot out only when you need them. Uh, you can have other utility characters uh, for orcs. Another great example, perfect example, it's a night goblin big boss with a great weapon. It's only 34 points, very cheap, but yet it has three strength six attacks. So, I mean, you take a unit of night goblins, you throw three of these in there, I mean, that's only give, taking about 100 points, and you have nine strength six attacks. All of a sudden, this is a little cheap unit. So, you can throw tons of those in. I can easily see some orc and orc goblin armies having uh, upwards to 12 to 15 characters with all these little tiny ones being thrown in all the way. Uh, through your lines to help out with these attacks and then of course there's the other ones where you know sometimes you want to have a scouting character for so going back to orcs maybe you want to take that black orc big boss that has the uh, the mad map so that he can move up wa and you know charge out and kill things uh, you know there's this depending on the army book of course we've probably all seen back in seven that oh I could be doing this but it doesn't work into the the four character slots well, all of a sudden you do have these character slots, so there's so many things you can do with them. Uh, so really play around with them to what you like and what works for you. So uh, just a quick summary again, you're going to need that general, you're going to need that BSB. They probably want to hide because there's going to be assassin characters. After that, you're going to better have that level 4, probably a, a secondary mage, and then after that, whatever utility characters you want to sneak into there. Uh, so that's all I want to talk about today. Uh, next time we're going to be talking about ways that even though most of baiting and fleeing is gone, the ways you can still use the movement phase to get the hit flanks. So hope to see you then. Bye.